Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. We just passed 1,000 subscribers, so that means new intro, new outro, new websites, a new haircut, and most importantly, two new languages. So the two new websites we'll be covering are Hacker Earth and Code Chef, and the two new languages that I'll be adding to the solution videos are Java and Python, as I'm sure you saw in the intro. So initially, I'm only going to be adding the Java and Python solutions to the Sunday episodes, but uh, long term going forward, my goal is to have a C++, Java, and Python code solution for each of the solution videos that I upload. And uh, rest assured, this channel is going to be predominantly a C++ channel as 85% of competitors on TopCoder and CodeForces use C++ as the language of their choice. But I do know that there are some people out there that are using Python and Java in their day jobs and they choose to use these languages as well on the competitive programming website. So hopefully uh, this channel will be a resource for them as well. And of course, thank you so much to everybody that's subscribed and that has been watching these videos over the last three months since I started the channel. It's been awesome to watch this channel grow and I really appreciate the feedback that you guys have been leaving down in the comment section. That being said, let's take a look at the contest that happened last week. Last week we had four contests, Code Forces Educational 42 on Tuesday. This was originally scheduled to be round 475, but they swapped round 475 and Educational 42. So round 475 has been delayed till this upcoming Tuesday. Then on Friday we had the first online round, sub round A from Google Code Jam. On Saturday we had Top Coder SRM 733 at noon. And of course we also had the weekly leak code contest, contest 79 on Saturday evening. As well we also had uh, the April long challenge from Code Chef that continues to go on uh, until about a day and a half from when this video will be uploaded. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards of the three contests that happen, here they are. Uh, most notably, we had UE placing in the top 10 in all three of these contests. Uh, Lim Panda finishing in first for Leak Code, Cree finishing in first for the Div 1 Top Coder SRM, and Bank finishing in first for the Code Forces Educational Contest. Taking a look at our updated overall top 10 leaderboards, I didn't cover Code Forces based on the round 474 from two weeks ago, uh, but we had Tourist dropping from 4th to 5th, and we'll call him 00 pulling into 4th place. And for Top Coder, we had no changes in the top 9, but due to Kuniovsky's second place finish in the Div 1 Top Coder contest, he broke into the top 10. The problems I'll be covering today are problem one from Leak Code Contest 80, and I'll also be covering problem two and three from the Division Two uh, Top Coder SRM 733. As well, I'll be trying to get to a couple solution videos that have been requested by subscribers. So let's take a look at our first problem. The first and only problem we'll be covering today is problem one from Leak Code Contest 80 entitled Most Common Word. The question states, given a paragraph and a list of banned words, return the most frequent word that is not in the list of banned words. It is guaranteed that there is at least one word that isn't banned and that the answer is unique. Words in the list of banned words are given in lowercase and free of punctuation. Words in the paragraph are not case sensitive. The answer is in lowercase. And note that the uh, length of our paragraph is going to be less than a thousand. Uh, the, le the length of our band words is going to be less than a hundred. Uh, the length of each of our band words is going to be less than 10. And uh, the paragraph, when it comes to punctuation, is going to consist of uh, exclamation, question, apostrophe, uh, comma, semicolon, and uh, period. So let's take a look at an example. So this is the example that Leak Code provided us with. It gives us the paragraph, Bob hit a ball, the hit ball flew far after it was hit. And it gives us the banned words, uh, which is only one that is hit. So the thing we have to do with this problem is basically come up with a map of all of the words and a count for each of those words. So the two most common ones are going to be ball and hit. 
And uh, because hit is a band word, we should return ball as our answer. But note that there's sort of two complications to this problem. One of them is that uh, we need to remove punctuation. So if we're, to, if we're to parse this paragraph and split it by spaces, this comma would be attached to this ball. So technically, a uh, ball would not be uh, included in a ball without the comma. On top of that, we also have lowercase and uppercase to deal with. So we should be converting our paragraph to all lowercase and removing all the punctuation before we create our map. So other than that, it's a pretty straightforward problem. Uh, we don't really need any visualizations to see how this is going to work, so we can, straight, uh, we can jump straight to the code. So here is our C++ solution. Uh, this is going to be cleaned up, but this is basically how I implemented it when I was doing the contest. So uh, you can see here we have a function, most common word, it takes uh, two parameters, a string p, our paragraph, and a vector of strings, our band word. So at the top we're just creating an unordered set, a hash set, uh, and we're using the range constructor, so all of the words that are in our band list are going to be in this unordered set. And then the next three lines are dedicated to removing the punctuation from our paragraph p. So we create an unordered set of characters, that are all the punctuation characters that we need to remove. Then we create a lambda uh, that's going to tell us uh, if the current character we're looking at is in our punctuation set. And then we use the erase uh, remove if idiom or the erase remove idiom to uh, first sort of partition all of our punctuation characters to the right and then uh, erase those characters from our string. Um, and uh, after we've done this, then we are just going to loop through and convert any of our uppercase characters to lowercase. Uh, so this is this works, and it uses the erase remove idiom and also a lambda, which is nice. Uh, but when I was reviewing other people's code, there was a much much cleaner way to do this. So uh, we can sort of reduce all three of those lines uh, into the uh, one line that was. Uh, changing our uppercase to lowercase and that's by just checking that uh, before we switch it to lowercase is it alpha so is it an alpha character and uh, if it is then we go to lowercase if it isn't then we just change it to a space now note that that this uh, code by itself with the remaining code will not work you need to make an adjustment down here below uh, but once we make that adjustment this will work and it's much cleaner in my opinion um, so the change that we need to make down here, we'll come back to this code in a sec, uh, we have two while loops and basically what we're doing here is we're looping through our paragraph and uh, we're saying loop and we've got these two uh, indexes i and j that just point i to the beginning of a word, j to the end, while we're not looking at a space, keep on incrementing. And then once we have that sort of start and end, we just get the substring and then we have our word w. So if we make use of, so the reason this will break is that it, it relies on the fact that there's, there's only one space in between words but if we are replacing punctuation with a space this will break so if we use a, a string stream uh, we can avoid all of this uh, i j looping and then resetting it to get the next word um, we can just declare this i string stream uh, iss and uh, give it the string paragraph p as its parameter and then we can just do this while loop uh, and use the uh, right angle right angle operator the input operator uh, and uh, go ISS and then just declare a string W and uh, this is much much simpler so already just doing those two things uh, avoiding the lambda and the uh, erase remove idiom and just using the is alpha function and then making use of string stream we've cleaned up our code a lot um, and so the only thing we're doing inside uh, so we've declared our map up here our unordered map or hash map uh, that has a string as a key and the integer which is the count of that word and then we also have this maximum integer keeping track of what word has the maximum count uh, so inside our while loop for each word we check that it's not banned uh, and then if it's not we add it to our uh, hash map or we do a post increment if it's already in there and then we just check that is the uh, count greater than our current maximum word and if it is we reset our current word to be the answer and then also reset our maximum so there's two uh, things that we can still clean this up here we can move this post increment and uh, on our reference uh, to the value of our word that we're looking at into our if statement and make it a pre-increment and then we can also uh, move this uh, up and sort of remove our brackets 
so then we have this, which looks much nicer as well, in my opinion. And the final thing that we can do to clean this up is we can turn our string answer and our integer maximum into a pair. Uh, so we've turned what was originally like a 20 plus line solution into a nine line solution, making use of is alpha, string stream, uh, the pre increment on our bracket operators, and using a pair instead of a string and an integer. So thanks to Lee215, who uh, posted his solution on the Leak Code forum, and I used uh, his solution as a reference for this. So moving on to our Java solution. So the Java solution is very similar, obviously. We're making use of a hash set for our band words as well as a hash map uh, to keep track of the words. Um, Java has this nice method called split that you can call on any uh, string and you can give it uh, the character or sort of a regex expression that you want to split. So this is just saying any uh, space, one or more, so the plus means one or more and the slash slash s is just a, a space literal. And uh, we have a two lowercase function that we're also calling on our paragraph and uh, we're doing this replace all uh, with a regex here which is basically saying anything that's not, that's what the caret here means, uh, lowercase or an uppercase or a space uh, we basically want to remove. So this is just removing all our punctuation here. And then unfortunately Java doesn't have uh, a pair so we have to have our string and integer keeping track of the word and our maximum count of that word separately but then everything else is basically the same so we're checking that our uh, current word doesn't exist in our band uh, set and if that's the case we are just going to do either we're going to put it into our insert it into our hash map and make sure that if it already exists we're doing a increment on it and not just inserting it and then here's the same check if our current count of the word we're inserting is greater than our maximum uh, we just reset the answer to be the word and our maximum to be the current uh, value of that uh, count of that word and moving on to uh, Python which probably has the nicest solution of all and that is usually the case whenever there's parsing involved uh, we're using the same regex expression in order to split our paragraph into uh, separate words and they have a dot lower and dot split method similar to Java here we're uh, declaring our hash map to store the count of each of our words and this isn't a pair exactly uh, I guess it's probably a tuple um, and then we just have our for loop so for word and words which we've created here if it's not in in our band words we're going to just do a uh, insertion and then an increment on the count of that word and at each step we check to make sure that uh, we're storing the current maximum uh, count and the word and at the end of this for loop we just return uh, the answer and the last thing to talk about is time complexity. So going back to our C++ solution, uh, the time complexity of this problem is going to be linear in the length of our paragraph because all of our operations are just simply iterating over uh, the paragraph itself. Taking a look at the contests that are happening next week, we have the Code Forces round 475 that was supposed to take place last week on Tuesday, but it, that is taking place this Tuesday. That's for both Division 1 and 2. We have the April Circuits contest that lasts for a number of days, uh, brought to you by the Hacker Earth website that starts on Saturday morning. We have the weekly Leak Code contest on Saturday evening, and we also have the April Cookoff contest on Sunday from Code Shift. As well, we also have the Hacker Rank Week of Code. 37 that starts uh, tonight and will last uh, for the remainder of this week and last but not least taking a look at the top 10 viewing countries uh, no changes in the top nine but we do have a first time newcomer country in the number 10 spot and that is Bangladesh so once again thank you to everybody for watching all around the world as always if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful hit that like button if you want to see more make sure to hit that subscribe button you can follow me on twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my github page thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video